In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of regular expressions. And in this case, we're going to talk a little bit more about using them, in particular, this idea of those patterns that we use to express the, the, um, the type of expression we want to look for. So the easiest way to express these is with literal text. In that case, the pattern is just literally what you want. So as an example, we could look at some of the first few names. So uh, let's pull this EX. Oh, wait, it's load. So if you want to follow along, make sure that you load Tidyverse and Titanic and then load the data set. And then we can do EX. And so this, again, is just all of those different names. And maybe for right now, let's just pull out the first three of those. So I can use the square index bracketing to show that. So we've got these three names that we're starting with. Let's say that we wanted to pull out MR, literally MR. So we can do the string extract again. And we'll do that. First, we need to put in the string that we're working with, the vector for that. You can put that in as the first argument, or if you want, you can use the formal argument string equals. And then the second piece is we need to say what the pattern is. So in this case, if we literally want to look for capital M, lowercase r, then we can pull it out like that. And you can see that it's matched to the first two because we had Mr. here and then those first two letters in Mrs. So it's pulled out both of those. And then for the third one, there was nothing because it doesn't have a match there where it goes into Miss MI. As a note, this is case sensitive. So if we did a lowercase m first, you can see none of them are matching. So you do need to get the case right. This is just a note on that, on that case sensitivity. There are a few characters though, as you're doing these kinds of literal matches, there are a few characters that are called meta characters. And you need to protect those if you want to use them literally, because otherwise they mean something special in these. They're a special kind of code to represent some kind of pattern. So the first thing we'll talk about with those is just if you have one that you want to literally use, how to protect it. And then later we'll talk about what those different meta characters mean. So let's talk about protecting first. For that, you will use two backslashes. So let's do an example first and see kind of what can go wrong and then how to fix it. If we have the pattern Mr. with a period at the end, we might want to do that to pull out the cases or to identify the rows where the title is Mr. If we put our pattern in like this, though, without protecting that period, we're going to have problems. The period is one of those meta characters. So it, it's got this kind of special meaning if we use it by itself. It means that you can have anything, any of your characters. So if we put in this pattern, it will match MR period, just like we want, but it will also match some things we don't want. So it'll match the MRS because S belongs to that kind of any character. So it's filling in that space. We can come and take a look here. So if we add on the period here and run it, you can see it's pulled out Mr. MR period, but it's also pulled out MRS because the S matches anything. So if we want this literal expression, what we need to do is we need to protect it with two backslashes, protect that period. So we can come in in our pattern and do the two backslashes first to protect that. And now R knows that we mean literally a period in that space. Now you can see that it only pulls out for the MR period. All right, so this is something, if you want to write down the notes for that, this idea that the period is a meta character, so you need to protect it. Here are all the meta characters that we have in regular expressions in R. So we just looked at the period, and that matches any character. So here's the use. And then again, um, to match that literally, we need to do two backslashes and then the period. We've got some others that will match any character, or, or match, excuse me, match something that we've kind of like just explained to match, but it will, it will allow us to match more than one of them. So typically when we put in a character, it's only gonna match a single one of those. This says, okay, match not just that, but, but extras of it too. So the asterisk will let you match none, or more of something, while the plus, you have to have at least one of those, but then it will also pull out if you have extras. 
For both of these, again, if you want to literally match to an asterisk or a plus sign, then you need to do the two back slashes before to protect it. The square brackets will let you put in a subset of different possibilities to match for. And often we'll use codes to say like all uppercase letters are all lowercase letters, and we put them inside these square brackets to express that idea that it could be one of things in a set. There's also a caret. That means different things depending on where it comes. If it comes inside those square brackets, it means anything but. It's kind of like a negator, kind of like the bang operator in logical statements. If we have it outside of it, though, then it's looking for a pattern that starts with a, a certain letter or certain certain pattern. So in other words, you have that right at the beginning of the string. The parentheses can be used to extract part of a pattern, and we'll look at that a little bit in an example. So sometimes you will have a longer pattern that you want to use where the, the borders of it kind of help define the pattern, but what you want to pull out is really just something in the middle of that. And so in those cases, you can use parentheses to mark off the part that you want to extract later. You can use a question mark to match zero or one of something. The, the curved brackets to customize the number of times to match. So if you wanted to match um, uh, like four zeros, then you could specify that there. Again, this backslash escapes the meta character. So that in itself, if you want to literally search for a backslash, you actually have to put in the pattern of three backslashes in a row. The first two are protecting that third one. And then finally, there's the dollar sign and that matches where you're looking for something that happens at the end of the character string. So we'll look at some examples of using these patterns, but again, for this slide, this is trying to drill home this idea that if you want to literally match any of these in your string, you need to make sure that you protect them with two backslashes first. So let's take a look at using some of these patterns. Here's an example. We might want to pull out MR and then a period, but we can allow an S inside too. This would extract Mr. and Mrs. So the way that we do that is we can put in literally capital M and then a lowercase r. We're putting in our period at the end, but protecting it with those double backslashes. And then this part in the middle is doing that special specification of there can be an S here, but there doesn't have to be. So this is saying an S, and in this case, I put it in the square brackets, but we probably could have done without because it's just one letter we're checking for. And then the asterisk is saying that you can have either zero of those or you can have multiple of those. So we can try that pattern in our example here. Here's our pattern we had before. Again, that only matched Mr. But if we add in an S, and we can try it without the square brackets in this case, and then the asterisk directly after, it's saying, that we will consider it a match if there's nothing here or if there's one and only one S. So if we run that, now you can see it's pulled out misses and it's pulled everything out to the period in this case. The next thing that we might want to match to kind of like continue our expansion is we might what we might not really care what the letters are between the capital M and the period. So in that case, we can use the square brackets to match to anything in a set of letters. So this is saying any of the lowercase letters between A and Z. We, so this would match just the mister, and we can try that if we didn't put the plus sign. So let's come back here. Oh, we need that protection. And we'll say any lowercase letter. So right now, as we've expressed it, it will match if there's one lowercase letter, but only if there's just a single one before you get to the period. But it won't care which one it is. It won't care if it's R, or A, or B, or C, or whatever. So in this case, the only one that matched that pattern was Mr. All of the others had more letters before it got to the, to the period, so it didn't match that. So if we want to allow any number of letters, one or more of them, then we need to do the plus sign here. And that will say anything that starts with an M and then has one or more letters and uh, lowercase letters and then ends with a period. So you can see now it's pulled out all three of those because this all match that pattern of starting with a capital M and ending with a period and then having some number of lowercase letters in between.
So that last pattern is using something called a character class inside the square brackets. We use lowercase a to z, that was matching lowercase letters, any of the lowercase letters. But you can also put other things in there. You could match to digits by doing 0 to 9. You can match to uppercase letters with capital A to capital Z. But you can also pick out just some combinations you'd be OK with. So if you wanted to match just the vowels, you could put just the vowels in there. So let's take a look here. If we wanted to, let's look at these names. So we've got Mr., Mrs., and Miss. Let's try looking and seeing what happens if we only look for, for combinations that have the letters R and S. So that should pick out this first one and the second one, but not the third one because we've got an I in there. And now our character class does not include I. And you can see that, again, it, it doesn't pick out that last one. So you can negate these character classes by starting it, with, starting it with a caret sign. So in other words, if you put that caret sign at the beginning, it will match anything that is not a digit. So let's look here. If we put this R in, but it's going to match just ones where the only letters are R's. So just Mr. for the only letters in between capital M and the period. But if we put that caret at the beginning, it's again going to do the flip of that. So it will match only when there are letters that are not R in between. And so now we've got Miss. We can't get Mr. because that's MR, and we can't get Mrs. because that's MRS. So it has an R in the middle. So this is saying to exclude anything where those lowercase letters are R. All right, so continuing on with kind of looking at this title, the next thing that we might want to do is not limit it just to the capital M. We might want to pull out any of, of these titles regardless of what the first letter is. So we can try doing that by changing that first letter to be any of the capital letters. So we'll come here and let's change this back to the A to Z so we have any lowercase letters. But now let's let it start with any letter. And actually, in this case, we'll go back to the full EX because that way we can have some of these that, that don't. That, that have different letters to start. So let's do capital A to capital Z. So this is going to match anything that starts with a capital letter, then has one or more lowercase letters, and ends with a period. All right, so we can look through and we can see it's picking out um, some of the things we were getting before, like Mr. and Mrs., but it's also pulling out things with, that start with different letters. So we've got like doctor up here. And if we want to, we might be interested in actually seeing what unique values we have. So we could pipe this into a function called unique. This will take a vector of character strings, and it will give you just like one instance of each. So you can quickly see uh, every possibility that you have. So we can see that a lot of these do start with M, but we have some of these that are kind of military ones, like Captain, that start with a C. We've got some that are related to nobility titles, I guess, like Countess and Lady. Um, and we've got ones like Reverend and Doctor that we weren't picking out before.